ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ವಕ್ರತುಂಡ ಮಹಾಕಾಯ ಸೂರ್ಯಕೋಟಿ ಸಮಪ್ರಭ ನಿರ್ವಿಘ್ನ ಕುರು ಮೇ ದೇವ ಸರ್ವಕಾರ್ಯು ಸರ್ವದ ಗುರುರ್ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಗುರುರ್ವಿಷ್ಣು ಗುರುದೇವೋ ಮಹೇಶ್ವರ ಗುರು ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ ಪರಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮ ಟೀಂ ಪರಂ ವೇದಾಂತ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟೆನ್ಸ್ ಅ ವಾರ್ಮ್ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಥರ್ಟಿಯರ್ ಸೆಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಗಿಫ್ಟ್ ಗೀತಾ ಫಾರ್ ಇನ್ ಅ ಫ್ರೀಡಮ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಫರ್ಮೇಷನ್ ವಿ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂ ಅವರ್ ಸ್ಟಡಿ ಆಫ್ ಭಗವದ್ ಗೀತಾ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಆನ್ ಧ್ಯಾನ ಯೋಗ ಇನ್ ಟುಡೇ ಸೆಷನ್ ವಿ ಕವರ್ ವರ್ಸಸ್ ತರ್ಟಿ ಏಟ್ ಟು ಫಾರ್ಟಿ ಟೂ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ವಿತ್ ಅ ಶ್ರೀಮತಿ ಪೂರ್ಣಿಮಾ ಶ್ರೀಮತಿ ಸ್ಮಿತಾ ಪೈ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಶ್ರೀನಿವಾಸ ರಾವ್ ನೂಪಿ ಶ್ರೀಮತಿ ಅಂಜಲಿ ಶಂಕರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ನೇತ್ರ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೇನಿಂಗ್ ಟುಡೇಸ್ ವರ್ಸಸ್ the session will be moderated by shri venkatesh prasad who will introduce us to the topic and provide us deeper insights facilitating manana after shravana of each of the verse over to you sir thank you dr vasumadi sada shiva samarambham shankara acharya madhyamam asmada acharya paryantam vande guru parampara Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha. Lord Krishna has comprehensively discussed all the aspects of meditation, especially Vedantic meditation, which has to be practiced after a thorough study of Vedantic scriptures. And nowhere else we find such an elaborate discussion of meditation. And therefore, sixth chapter is important from this particular angle. He has even dealt with the topic of obstacles in meditation. especially the obstacle of mental distraction and about its remedy and krishna said that if a person should be successful in meditation he has to develop detachment from the world without vairagyam or detachment meditation will not be successful and without meditation vedanta cannot be assimilated and without assimilation we would not get the full benefit called jivan mukti and therefore we find vairagyam or detachment is given a very important position in the scriptures when krishna concluded in this manner arjuna looks at himself and sees whether he will be able to develop total detachment practice meditation and assimilate somehow unfortunately arjuna is not very confident of himself and therefore becomes very pessimistic with regard to the attainment of liberation in this janma itself and this is not arjuna's problem only this is the universal problem when a seeker comes to the spiritual field and sees the prescribed sadhanas he becomes extremely pessimistic i do not think we ordinary people can ever attain liberation there are a very few people maybe one shankara one ramakrishna one ramana thus pessimism is one of the common obstacle for every seeker therefore whether arjuna had this problem or not he identifies with the majority of humanity and presents his problem in the in these verses 37 38 and 39 we have completed 37th verse in which arjuna said suppose there is a person who has come to spirituality he thought he has grown out of religion and therefore he dropped all karmas temples and all other things and relinquish karma marga to go to tana marga in which he had total faith but because of one obstacle or the other may be physical obstacle called adhyatmika pratibandha may be environmental obstacle called adi bhautika pratibandha may be unseen obstacles called adi daivika pratibandha because of one obstacle or the other we could, he could not pursue the path of knowledge so ayati he means alpa prayatna an incomplete effort not because of lack of faith but because of obstacle and therefore naturally nana phalam of moksha he could not attain then at least can he attain the karma phalam of swarga arjuna feels that he would not get karma phalam also because he left the karma marga and spent the karma time for na with the hope that he wants to get a result which is higher i do not want swarga and come to moksha and swarga he dropped and moksham also he did not get 
which is typical Trishanko Stiti. Trishanko left the earth for the sake of attaining heaven and he was not granted visa in the Svargaloka and was turned off. Therefore, he was coming down. But Vishwamitra pushed him to go up. Vishwamitra pushed him to go up. Indra pushing down and Vishwamitra pushing up. Trishanku was in between, neither here nor there. Similarly, karma phalam bhuta svarga api nasti, nana phala moksha api nasti, will you not become a Trishanku? Therefore, he asked in 37 verse, He Krishna, ayatihi shraddhaya upeta, yoga chalita manasaha, vividiha samyasi, yoga samsiddhim aprapya kaam gachati. Yoga samsiddhi means moksha, aprapya means not getting. What will be the fate of that person? Where will he go? And Arjuna himself clarifies his pessimism further in verse 38, a very logical pessimism. I now invite Srimati Purnima to tell us about this verse. Purnima, please. Sri Guru Bhyo Namaha. From verse 6.37 to 6.39, Arjuna is raising a question based on Lord Krishna's teaching. Krishna pointed out that managing the mind is extremely difficult, but it is not impossible. Managing the mind is a compulsory exercise. Though difficult, if it is managed, one can assimilate the teaching and enjoy moksha here and now. This was Krishna's message. So next slide, sir. In in spite of Krishna's encouraging words, Arjuna is diffident and feels many people may fail in this exercise. Arjuna's question is centered on a Vividisha sannyasi and not on a Grahastha or a Vidvat sannyasi. If a Vividisha sannyasi, due to insufficient efforts, does not become a Vidvat sannyasi and dies, he is a spiritual failure called Yoga Bhrashta. Arjuna's question is, what will happen to this yoga brashta? Will he get an inferior janma? This leads to the verse 6.38. So next slide, sir. Kachinno bhaya vibrashthas chinna brahmi vanashyati apratishto mahabhaho vimudho brahmanapati. The anvaya of this shloka goes as follows. He mahabhaho. Ubhaya vibrashtaha, apratishtaha, brahmanaha, pati vimudaha, chinna brahmiva na nashati kachit. The word meaning Mahabaho, O mighty armed one, Ubhaya vibrashtaha, fallen from both margas, yoga marga and karma marga, apratishtaha, the supportless, brahmanaha pati, deluded in the pursuit of Brahman, chinna brahmiva, like a scattered cloud. Na nashyati kachit, does he not perish? Arjuna clarifies his question in verse 6.37 in this shloka. Arjuna gives a new name for this Vividisha sannyasi who is called here as a yoga brashta. This new name is Ubhaya Vibrashtaha, which is self-explanatory. Ubhaya Vibrashtaha means the seeker has lost both the types of support. In karma marga, he would have earned the support of punyam, which could have given him swarga. Here he lost the support of punyam. In yoga marga, since he did not become a vidvat sannyasi, he lost the support of gnanam. So neither does he have karma pratishtha, nor does he have gnana pratishtha. Here pratishtha means support. Next slide, sir. So Arjuna asks, Sache ubhaya vibrashtaha, chinna brahmiva na nashyati kachit. Does he not perish like a scattered cloud? Next slide. Vedantic teachings usually give examples from nature. Citing an example, Arjuna says, this Vividisha Sanyasi's condition is likened to a small cloud that has been separated from the larger cloud. Here we have to imagine two bodies of clouds, Grahastha cloud and a Vidvat Sanyasi cloud. One small cloud separates from the larger cloud, that is Grahastha cloud, 
with an intention to join the Vidvat cloud. This small cloud is the Vividisha Sanyasi. Wind cannot disperse a large cloud. However, it will dissipate and disintegrate a small cloud. This Vividisha Sanyasi is tossed by the powerful winds of Prarabdha and he gets deluded in the path towards Brahman and eventually will die as an ignorant Sanyasi. So, this Vividisha Sanyasi is like the small cloud without the support of karma or gnanam. Imagine a person gets out of the society and he does not have the support of a guru or ashrama. What will happen to this person? The mind does not have karma hold. The mind does not have shastra hold. Shastram has been dropped. Swadharma also has been dropped. Thus, his mind will dwell upon only sensory pleasures or other immoral things and the person ends up as a mithyachari and he suffers a fall. This is what is Vimudaha Brahmanaha Pati, getting deluded in the pursuit of Brahman. Therefore, it is said, Sanyasa is a highly risky ashrama because one can go out of both Shastram and Varnashrama Dharma and like the cloudlet, get into destruction. He Krishna, having fallen from the path of Brahman and from Karma Marga too, will he not perish? This is Arjuna's fear. Hari Hiyo, Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Purnima, for a clear explanation of uh, what Arjuna wants to know about Yoga Brasha. As Purnima has covered all the top points, I have nothing to add, but would like to mention an interesting discussion in Shankara Bhashya. The Bhashya says that chapter 6 in general and this question of Yoga Prashta in particular relates to Vividisha Sanyasi who has renounced Karma Marga for Nana Marga. Shankara emphasizes that the question relates only to Vividisha Sanyasi and not to a Grihastha who regularly performs Naimittika Karmas like Sandhyavandanam, Aupasanam, Agnihotram and Dashar, Dasharpanamasa Yoga, yoga etc. which yield enough Pundya to give him Swarga. While a sannyasi who has fallen from Nidityasana prescribed to him will neither get Swarga nor Moksha. Hence, Yoga Brashta concern is only to the Vividisha sannyasi. Purupakshi insists that the fall applies to Grihastha also as the Naimitika karmas of Grihastha will not fetch him karma phala and if he fails in Nidityasana, he is bound to lose both Swarga and Moksha. Shankara questions, if Kamya karma can give Phalam, Nishkama karma must give a better phala. So, Naimittika karma will result in accrual of Punya and the Grihastha who follows in this will attain Svarga. Shankara says, if it doesn't, Vedas will become Nirarthaka. He concludes the debate stating that if Vedas should be Pramanam, Nitya Naimittika karma should result in Punyam and a Grihastha will never become Yoga Prashta. As such, Chapter 6 is addressed to Vividisha Sanyasi only. Continuing with the topic, Arjuna will plead with Krishna in verse 39 to clarify his doubt as he is only competent person to remove this doubt. Srimati Smita will help us to understand the content. Smita, please. Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha. The verse 39 goes like this. Etan me samshayam Krishna. Chetumarhasya Sheshataha Tvadanyaha Samshayasya Samshayasyasya Chetana Hupapadyate. Now, in this verse, Arjuna concludes his question expressing his desperation. And this desperation is because Arjuna is not confident. Therefore, he says, Hey Krishna, you please answer the question and you can alone answer. Because a question regarding life after death, we can never know whether a person gets Videha Mukti or not. We have no way of seeing. Suppose a sannyasi is dying. We can never know whether his Sukshma Shariram is merging into Brahman or his Sukshma Shariram is going through Shuklagati. We don't see whether it is going through Krishnagati or going through Adhogati. Sukshma Shariram of sannyasi. Why sannyasi? Anybody's sukshma shariram 
is not visible either at the time of death or after death also. That is why we can never say a particular sannyasi has attained videha mukti or not. And in case of a jnani, he will never think about attaining videha mukti. And what will he say? That is, a jnani will say, I don't care because aham brahma asmi, who bothers about once a speck of sukshma shariram, when the entire cosmos is rising and falling in me, why should I be obsessed with a speck of sukshma shariram? Agnani also does not say, I will get or I will not get videha mukti. According to him, the obsession with videha mukti is a sign of ignorance because the obsession comes because of the sukshma shariram abhimana. And Arjuna is obsessed with the Videha Mukti because of his Sukshma Sharira Abhimana. Therefore, Arjuna says, This doubt nobody other than you, Lord Krishna, can remove. This is a gist. Now let's look into the Bhashyam. E tadme mama samshayam Krishna, chetum apanetum arhasi asheshataha, twad anyaha twad anyaha, Rushihi Devo Va Cheta Nashaita Samshayasya Asya Nahi Yasmat Upapadyate Na Sambavati Ataha Twam Eva Chetum Arhasi Iti Artaha Etat is in the Mulam. It is an adjective to be added along with Samshayam. Etat Samshayam, this doubt of mine. And what type of doubt? Will he not perish spiritually? He is, he, in this context, refers to failed vividisha sannyasi. Perish means get an inferior janma. So this samshayam, this doubt of mind regarding yoga brashta, me, is, is equal to mama, this doubt of mind, O Lord Krishna, chetum arhasi, you should eliminate by giving an answer. Chetum in, is equal to apanetum. Apanetum means eliminate. Arhasi, you should eliminate. And how much? Asheshataha, that is completely, completely and clearly you should answer the question with sufficient logical reasoning. Arjuna says, you give me a clear answer with logical support also. And Tvad Anyaha is in the Mula, it is which means Tvata. Anyaha, anybody other than you cannot answer this question because it is a Paurusheya Vishaya. And with regard to a Paurusheya Vishaya, Bhagavan alone is a Pramanam. Tvad Anya is equal to Tvataha Anyaha. Anyaha means any person. Tvataha means you. And who can it be? Rishi Deva Va. He might be a great Rishi. Even a Rishi cannot know the answer. And if at all a Rishi answers, you understand that the Rishi is not answering. The Rishi has read the Vedas. He is quoting the Veda answers. And the answer is coming from Bhagavan himself through the Rishi. The next word, Chetaha, it is in the Mulam, which, is, which means Nashaita. Who can eliminate this doubt? Nashaita means eliminator. Asya. Samshayasya of this doubt, na hi upapadyate, is never possible. They cannot eliminate this doubt. Upapadyate means samba, is equal to sambhavati. He is, means yasmat. Yasmat is, means logical reasoning. What is the reason? Because this is an apaurusheya vishaya. And all the other pramanams other than Veda, Veda, Veda Pratyaksha, Anumana, Upamana, Arthapati, Anu, Anupalabdi, Laukika Shabdaha, all the six pramanams can deal with only Paurusheya Vishaya, Maranantara Prashnaha. Nobody can answer with the help of Pancha Pramanam. Veda reveals something which is not accessible to any other pramanams. No other person, no other person, including Rishi and Deva, who do not have the Veda Pramana support, cannot eliminate this doubt. Upapadyati is equal to Sambhavati, 
okay now what is the final message shri shankaracharya gives the extract ataha tvam eva chetum arhasi iti artaha you alone should remove this doubt don't send me to anybody else you alone should remove this doubt and bhagwan is only ekaha when arjuna was so desperate krishna is going to answer this in the next coming verses the anvaya goes like this he krishna tvam etat me samshayam asheshatah chetum arhasi asya samshayasya tvat anyah cheta na hi upapadyate hari hi om thank you smita for a nice explanation of the verse now krishna has to respond to the query of arjuna he will start doing it from verse 40 which dr shrinivas ramuki will explain to us shrinivas sir shri guru bhyo namaha verse 40 is like this partha naiveha namutra vinashas tasya vidyate nahi kalyana krut kaschit durgatim tata gachati so let us see the meaning of the first line partha that is hey arjuna naiveha can be split into na plus eva plus iha this uh, eva plus na gets uh, anvaya with vidyate na eva vidyate so that's where it goes na eva means never na eva never the meaning is never iha means in this world so when we are dealing with in this world or in this loka we should have a comprehensive understanding of the chaturdasha lokas that is that is uh, the 14 lokas which are described in uh, in our uh, in our culture so in briefly let us see what is this chaturdasha lokas in briefly in one minute uh, we have been described as a brahmanda what exactly is brahmanda uh, it means it is an egg shaped uh, space wherein the 14 lokas are there the center of this brahmanda is earth there are six lokas above seven below our earth is number eight so uh, the teaching is uh, in in view in view of the modern uh, all the telescopes hubble telescopes and even now the latest telescopes where does this brahmanda fit in we know that our galaxy is it galaxy or not that is the doubt biggest doubt which we have my guruji has answered this question uh, what he says is uh, even in our own galaxy our galaxy has a diameter of 1 lakh light years 1 lakh light years so uh, naturally our earth from the galactic center our earth is 26000 light years so naturally brahmanda as described in our puranas is uh, we know that it is one few crore yojanas like that it has been described so what our guruji says is just imagine a egg shaped structure within our own galaxy and the main teaching is limit yourself to this galaxy to this brahmanda only there are Ananta Koti Brahmandas. So don't worry about all those things. So limit yourself to this finite space, finite Brahmanda. This finite space within the infinite creation is a Brahmanda. So this kind of Brahmandas are there. There are Ananta Koti Brahmandas. So within this Brahmanda, so Earth is within the center. There are 14 Lokas. This whole thing is space is a Brahmanda. And for this, we have Trimurtis, Vishnu, Brahma, and Rudra. And beyond this, there is that uh, Nirakara, Nirguna, Brahma. This is so, what is there beyond our Brahmanda? It's not your problem. Don't worry about this. This is the teachings. This is how our Guruji has explained. So this will confine ourselves. So we need not have to go beyond our Brahmanda. That's what it says. So, Naiveha Na Amutra. Amutra means other worlds. So even uh, in Shankaracharya's uh, Viveka Chudamani also this uh, Mutra word comes. So Amutra means other worlds. Other worlds means the higher worlds. He is not talking about the lower worlds here. So because you are doing, you are in yoga, you, are, you naturally you are not going to the lower world. You are supposed to go to the higher world and then go up and up. Higher world, going higher world doesn't mean uh, you should always come back. Some Even in Vedas, even in Kata Upanishad and all that, so Nachiketa Vidya is there. We have all the vidyas. So Nachiketa Vidya says, from earth you go to Swarga. And Swarga, you retain the uh, vidya and then go to Mukti. Not necessarily that you will go there 
uh, and you will come back. Uh, and once our punya is over, we will come back. That also verse is there. In the Bhagavad Gita, it says, Kshine punya uh, matse loke vishanti. That is, if you go there only by punya, then you may come back. But if you go there with an, a vidya or with uh, dhyana marga or with, you can also, it, it's like they are like a stepping stones. You can keep stepping up and up and up. But if you go only with punya, that is uh, only by doing good deeds, then he might fall down. So here, na amutra means the higher worlds than the earth. That's what we have to take. Not the uh, other, amutra actually means the other worlds, other lokas. But uh, here we have to take uh, from the higher worlds because you have done some dhyana yoga or some sort of yoga you have done. So from this world or from this loka or from the higher lokas, vinashas tasya na vidyate, vinashaha tasya na vidyate. For that person, tasya, tasya means here a dhyana yogi. Because here in this chapter, the Lord has described about dhyana. Probably you can take it as a jnana yogi or even a karma yogi or a raja yogi or a jnana yogi. We have a thousand ways to reach the Lord in, in our culture. Not one or two ways. There are more than a thousand ways described. These, these four are the main ways. So, tasya means that person who is, who is thinking about reaching the Lord, who has, mukti has his goal, goal and he started some form of yoga. Probably Dhyana Yoga, as described in this, uh, as described in this verse. So, Tasya Vinashaha Nayeva Vidyate. From this world, Nayiha Na Amutra Nayeva Vinashaha Nayeva Vidyate. That person does not have Vinasha. Vinasha here means, so here what Vinasha means, a, a person has reached a certain stage because of his efforts. He has not yet reached the ultimate, but he has stepped up a bit. So from that stage, his, uh, from that Atmodharana stage, his uh, Jiva, Jiva's level will not fall down. That's the meaning we have to take here. Vinashaha means. He might be born as a poor man or an uh, ignorant man. That doesn't matter because we know that Arjuna did not obtain Mukti. It is only Dharmaraja who obtained Mukti. In the Swargarohana Parva in Mahabharata, we know that everybody else has fallen down. Draupadi and Nakula Sahadeva, Bhima, Arjuna have all fallen down in their uh, in the last climbing, when they started climbing. Uh, so everybody has fallen down. Apparently, we, we know that Arjuna was reborn as a, a tribal Bhakta Kannapa and he reached uh, Mukti. So naturally, Arjuna did not attain mok Moksha, even though the Lord was his friend and brother-in-law and guru and all that. So, Partha Naiveha Namutra Vinasha Tasya Naeva Vidyate. So, from this loka or from the higher loka which he would have attained by doing this yoga, there is no fall from here. So, that's what the first line. Next line is Nahi Kalyana Krut Kaschit. Nahi Kalyana Krut Kaschit. Kalyana Krut, Kalyana Krut Kaschid. Kaschid, when you split, it becomes Kaschit. Uh, Kalyana Krut Kaschit. Kalyana Krut means good works. Here, good works means not uh, some dana, dharma, and good deeds. Like here, Kalyana Krut means any Atmodharana activity which uh, Jeeva, Jeeva has done, which a person has done. Atmodharana activity. That is called Kalyana Krut here. That meaning we have to take. Any, any form of yoga practice he has done, if he, if he does, for him, Durgatim na gachati. For him, there is no Durgati. Again, same thing. He says, last verse, last line also, he said, Vinashaha. Here, you're using Durgati. Durgati, again, the same meaning. No downfall from his state of Atmodharana. So, basically, the meaning is, any sort of Atmodharana you have done in this life, it, it may not be sufficient to reach uh, Mukti state. Uh, so, so, but you have stepped up a few steps you have climbed a few steps. So next life, if you if you may not have attained the ultimate uh, stage, there are one possibility. Another possibility is brasta. Brasta word is used here. Yoga brasta is used. Brasta means falling down. Falling down means yoga brasta. A person has realized that this worldly existence and worldly is of no use and he started doing some sort of sadhana to obtain uh, mukti. 
but in between he after doing uh, sadhana for say one or two or three years he again develops uh, some sort of uh, desire in his mind so he wants if he's for example a sadhu a, a big raja has gone with his family with all the aishwarya he wanted to he went to visit a sadhu that uh, we all we all go and uh, meet a sadhus with reverence that they are superior to us but sometimes it may happen that that sadhu may think that so much of uh, a beautiful wife so much of uh, santanam that is children so much of aishwaryam so that is brashta state that is yoga brashta he is already in the form of yoga and he is falling from that stage so he is called as yoga brashta so again here yoga brashta is not a my guru ji says einstein is one such yoga brashta again for example uh, uh, because if a person goes on evol uh, evol evolutionarily atmodharana if he does and if he goes on reaching mukti so world may not be gained from him so some people are converted like this by the lord so that the world may gain so we know that sometimes there are people who have an inherently born skill so there may be a big musician he wouldn't have learned anything from his teachers but he inherently has a skill a big teacher a big raja may be there if you go and if a people sometimes we hear saying that he is not an ordinary king he is a yoga brashta king this kind of words are there in both andhra and karnataka state so a yoga brashta king a yoga brashta uh, doctor sometimes in our field also we see apparently if we come across such yoga brashta apparently uh, guru ji says there will be lot of uh, in their faces uh, there will be lot of uh, tejas in their face and if you look into their face we cannot even tell lies and those people can even identify that this fellow is lying apparently some kings can make out that these people are lying just by looking into their face so all these things are uh, uh, their uh, Uh, uh previously they have undergone some atmodharana stage and from there they have fallen down that is yoga brashta sometimes there may not be brashta state they would have not reached the final goal but they have this um, body has fallen off that means he died but not reached then the next verse says that they will be born into the uh, family of a yogis so whatever it is in this verse uh, krishna says the lord says once you start your practice of yoga and any attempt of atmodharana you have done in this stage in this life then the, in the next life it will continue like that and you will not go down you will not become for example earlier you were a nastika now you became a astika uh, now you know that you 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 have all this you believe in all these principles you have a guru you have surrendered to your guru and your guru will not leave you uh, even in your life next life you will be born as a bhakti bhakta or a yogi and you will continue the this is very very important otherwise most of us we know that in our lifetimes it may not be possible like arjuna also we know that we may not reach that stage okay. whatever said and done we will have our own estimate of how much we can uh, go ahead in this life with our sadhana how much effort we are putting in so this verse of krishna this verse of the lord himself so it is a big solace to all the sadhaks had it this not been there probably 99.99% of sadhaks would have left sadhana thank you sir thank you sir for a wonderful explanation of this verse as dr sir explained krishna gives general assurance in the verse 40 about yoga brashta in the next verse he gives more specific account of what will happen to yoga brashta in his next janma i request shrimati anjali shankar to tell us all about these specifics anjali please shri guru bhyo namaha let's see the verse 41 prapya punya kritam lokan ushitva shashvati saman shuchi nam shrimatam gehe yoga bhrashto bhi jayate the meaning of the verse is having attained the worlds of righteous people and having lived there for many years one who has fallen from yoga is reborn in the family of the cultured and prosperous here yoga means jnana yoga 
In this verse, Krishna further clarifies Arjuna's doubt on what will be the fate of a seeker of insufficient efforts, a yoga bhrashta, who neither qualifies for karma phalam, that is swarga, nor for jnana phalam, that is moksha. Why is he or she not getting the karma phalam? Because the seeker diverted the attention to jnana marga. Then why not jnana phalam? Because of insufficient effort in the spiritual path. Arjuna wanted a clear answer to this crucial doubt from Krishna himself. Arjuna said, Etan me samshayam Krishna chetam arhasya sheshata. Only you can clear my doubts, O Bhagavan. Because only Bhagavan knows what happened in my past lives and what can happen after death. Very affectionately, like a father to his child, Krishna answers and reassures Arjuna that there is absolutely no loss in, the, in this birth or hereafter for the one who walks in the path of spiritual life. There is no bad end to a spiritual seeker at all. This verse is indeed a source of great confidence for all of us because Arjuna have asked this question to Krishna on behalf of all of us. Then, where will this seeker be? Where a yoga brashna, brashta ends up? Krishna says, Prapya punya kritam lokan ushitva shashwati sama. A yoga brashta, he or she, may not have succeeded in their spiritual path, but the seeker acquired a lot of punyam because they made noble, sincere attempts towards spirituality through Vedanta Shravanam or Gita Shravanam. This very effort has given lots of punyam to the seeker as a byproduct. As a result of that punyam, he will go to heaven. Punyakritam lokan prapya. Who are Punyakrit mentioned here? Those people who have done great yagas. To this very same loka, this yoga bhrashta also will go. Vedanta Shravanam itself is equal to sacred yagas. Not only will he attain those lokas, Shashwati Sama Ushitva. He will remain and reside there for many years and will get all the enjoyments of the Swarga Loka. But is that what a yoga brashta is looking for? In his previous birth, he had done sincere attempts in the spiritual path. He seeks only God. So moksha is what he is desiring for. Therefore, Bhagavan gives him or her an appropriate work for continuing the spiritual sadhana. And this yoga brashta is reborn. Where do the yoga brashta be reborn? By God's grace. Shuchi nam shrimatam gehe. In the family of prosperous and cultured parents. Shuchi here means culture. Means in that family where dharma, values and religion will be there. Shrimatam Gehe. Yoga Brashta will be born in a prosperous family. Shrimatam means prosperous. Why does Krishna grant a rebirth in such a cultured and wealthy family for a yoga brashta? Because for one to focus on their spiritual growth, the basic human needs should be fulfilled. Without the basic needs being taken care, there is no chance of sadhana chatushtaya sampatti. A cultured and wealthy family will be an ideal place for doing more of nishkama karma and further sadhanas for spiritual upliftment. Hari Om. Thank you. Thank you, Anjali, for a vivid explanation of the verse 41. Krishna continues with this response in the next verse and tells about other possible phalams to such a yoga prashta. I request Dr. Netra to explain to us 
what Krishna says in this verse 42. Dr. Netra, please. Namaste. Haryam Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha. The sixth chapter, this is actually called as Dhyana Yoga or Atma Samyama Yoga. This elaborately deals with the dhyana or spiritual meditation. And you can see here, these are the topics which are enumerated. And presently, we are at the Yoga Brashta topic. This has come after Arjuna's question as to what happens to a person with incomplete Karma Yoga and incomplete Jnana Yoga. In the previous verse, Krishna has already mentioned that there is never a downfall for a spiritual seeker. After discussion about a Jnani born in rich cultured family, in this verse, he gives Atava, the second possibility for a Yoga Brashta as to what will happen when he is born. The verse proper, Atava Yogina Meva Kule Bhavati Bhimatam Etaddi Durlabatharam Loke Janma Yedidrisham. This means, otherwise, he is born in the family of wise sages themselves. Such a birth is very rare indeed in this world. So he is born in the family of Jnanis. They lead a very simple life. And therefore, Shankaracharya says, they are born in a poor family, but a family of jnanis. And when there is jnanam, poverty will not be considered a curse. It will be considered as an ideal situation for following tapas. If food is not there, it is good for upavacha practice. It will be considered a blessing. Less possession, less worry. And therefore, in such families of jnanis, a person will be born dhimatam yoginam. This means wise sages. The advantage is he need not go in search of a guru. The father or the mother is guru. For example, Bhruguvandi of Taitriya Upanishad is in the form of a dialogue between father and son. Such a birth as a child of a jnani is durlabataram. That means it is rare because being a jnani is rare. In that, in among sannyasis, we know that jnanis are there. But as a brahastha jnani, it is rare. And to be born in that family, that birth is further rare. Coming to the next slide. The next question is, does a person get a conducive janma for spiritual sadhana? Should he start the spiritual sadhana from scratch? Or it will be continuity of what he has already done in the previous janma? So for this, Krishna says that this is brought forward. You are born with the phalam, the spiritual result which you have acquired in the previous Janma, which means that the person is born with advanced spirituality, a spiritually evolved person, which he calls as spiritual genius. So from this, we come to know a very important thing. The spiritual genius of this Janma is a yoga brashta of previous Janma. In the Bhashyam, there are few new messages. When a person is born with spiritual inclination, poverty will not be considered as a curse because poverty will be taken as port, possession, obligation, responsibilities, transaction, reduction, naturally implemented by Bhagavan himself. This person who is poor will consider that Bhagavan himself has given this port reduction and they consider the poverty as wealth. The Janma mentioned in the previous sloka compared to a birth in rich and cultured family, birth in poor, spiritually wise family is still rare because Manushyatvam is, is there from the birth itself, Mumukshatvam will be there from birth itself and Mahapurusha Samshaya is available at home. Common people like us, for spiritual growth, we are supposed to go to satsang. For these children, satsang starts right from the birth itself. The father, mother are spiritual. They attend Veda classes with the parents. They invite swamis to their house and therefore children are exposed to sannyasis right from beginning. So these spiritual genius like Ramana Maharshi and others, they don't have a conventional guru as mentioned in the Upanishad because they are spiritual genius and that is rare. So in conclusion, this verse talks about a yoga brashta who is Dhimatam Yoginam, that is, he is born among the wise sages, and that is Durlabataram, that means it is rare to be born as a spiritual genius.
Namaste. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nitra, for a detailed explanation of what Krishna assures in the verse 42. Krishna continues with his proclamation about the benefits of such yoga brashta enjoys in this in his next janma in the next three verses. And in the last two verses of chapter 6, he glorifies the yogis with an advice to Arjuna to be a yogi. We will look into this in our next session of gift. With this, we come to the close of today's session. Over to you, Dr. Vasumati. Thank you, sir. We have come to the end of today's satsanga, which has enriched our spiritual learning. Grateful thanks to all the speakers and Sri Venkatesh Pratas, sir, for bringing a lot of clarity to our understanding of the concept of Yoga Brachta and the assurance that our sadhana is a recurring deposit that we carry forward across births till we have the fruition of self-knowledge. The next class is on Mandukya Upanishad Karika on 14th of June, 2024. Param Vedata thanks each one of you for your continued interest in the pursuit of Atma Vidya through our series of sessions and also for your positive feedback. We conclude today's session with our usual Shanti Mantra. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Shishyate Om Shanti 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 Krishnam Vande Jagadgurum.